All right, final piece of uh, lesson eight on support vector machines is a coding example. Now, before we do this, I just uh, give you a summary of what we've all seen. Yeah, here is the type of classifier, and here is the data set. And I added this breast cancer data set that we will use as a new data set for uh, SVMs. But we'll also do an SVM on the diabetes case, uh, just you know, to see if it does better or worse uh, compared to the other classifiers. And here you see that I already uh, applied um, the other classifiers on uh, the breast cancer data set. And the accuracy is quite high. Yeah? So let's see what SVM does on this one and that one. Um, we don't do these two, uh, mainly because uh, it's a lot of calculation. Huh? For example, on the Reuters dataset, the multi-class classification, I had this thing running for hours and hours and hours. Yeah? So we don't want to go there, especially if we don't have the right uh, machinery to process all these calculations. Okay, now let's uh, take a look, deeper look at the data set. As mentioned, it will be a breast cancer data set, but the great thing is that it's part of the Scikit-Learn library. Uh, it saves us from a lot of pre-processing. And we have 30 features, and these 30 features eventually going to have a, an influence on a decision that um, classifies this tumor as benign or malignant, you know? The number of samples is around 569, so it's not a huge data set. Uh, uh, if you compare with, you know, IMDB and Reuters, it's much smaller. Okay, what are the parameters uh, for support vector machine? Well, there's a few, yeah? Uh, first one is the kernel. Which kernel do you choose? You cho choose a linear kernel, a polynomial kernel, and when you choose a polynomial kernel, you need to specify the degree. If you don't, the default is a degree of 3. And then we have another parameter. If we select a radio-based function, RBF, I told you that it's a very popular uh, kernel to use. It has a parameter called gamma. Yeah. And what does gamma do? Well, it, it decides how far the influence of a single training sample uh, reaches. Yeah? So if you have a high gamma, you have a lot of uh, uh, flexibility to curve around these points. Whereas if you have a lower gamma, your, your decision boundary is going to be more decisive. Yeah? So for a higher gamma, you'll get something like this. Yeah? To classify all the, the crosses. Yeah? Whereas if you have a low gamma, your decision boundary will be uh, a little bit more uh, decisive. Yeah? Um, a third parameter is the C parameter. And uh, <clears throat> the default is that C is set to 1. So what does C do? Well, C, C um, trades off. Um, the maximum separation versus a perfect classifier. What do we mean by that? Well, in this case, the perfect classifier would have this as a margin. Yeah. Um, but you see that if, if you ignore a little bit this point and consider it an outlier, well, then your decision boundary or your gutter will be much larger. Yeah? So um, that's the trade-off here. Yeah? So is the margin soft or is the margin hard? 